Hey there, welcome back to my channel where today I'm doing this eyeshadow look using this palette. This is the Still Pretty palette from September Rose Cosmetics. I have decided to use this to replace one other in my collection and in today's video I'm also going to be talking a little bit about pregnancy because I am nine months pregnant and I could really have a baby any day. <laughs> but I'm also going to be talking a bit more about project panning. So if you're interested in any of that content, don't go anywhere. If you've never been here before, hi, my name is Rachel. I am a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I really enjoy playing with eyeshadow, but particularly particularly colorful eyeshadow, and I upload multiple videos every week. They are all eyeshadow related content. Tags, get ready with me's, tutorials, ranking videos, new releases, it's all eyeshadow. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, you're in the right spot. I hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. All right guys, let's get started. I'm gonna start with the Glamlet Icing Primer. I have the shade White Frosting, and I, okay, so I bought this primer last year as, okay, last year. We're in 2023 now, right? So I actually bought it at the end of 2021 with Black Friday sales when I bought some palettes from Glam Light. And I have been using it every single time I do my eyeshadow. So what is that? Maybe four to five times a week. And I'm just now getting to the point where I have to actually work at the tube a little bit to push product forward. So that gives you an idea of how long that product has lasted me. I'm actually really impressed and surprised because I've had it for over a year using it almost daily. It's just, it's lasted me a long time. Go Glam Light. So in today's video, I want to play with the Still Pretty palette from September Rose Cosmetics. I have played with this a few times off camera. It's been a little while, I think, since I used it on camera. And I specifically want to play with these two shades right here. And, you know, I have decided that this is going to replace my Mimosa palette from BH Cosmetics. Let me tell you why. I really like the Mimosa palettes from their brunch series. It's very good quality. It's, it's really, really good quality. Every single time I look at this palette, or if you've watched any of my ranking videos that include this palette, you will know that I think it doesn't go quite dark enough. And also, pink is my least used eyeshadow color. It's just not a color that I often reach for, even though I like it. It's just not, it's not my favorite, you know? So when I talk about the Mimosa palette, I always say I wish it went a little bit deeper. I wish it had a couple of dark reds, maybe a purple here and there, just to round out the palette a little bit more. And the September Rose Still Pretty palette includes all of that. This has the pink shades, but it also has reds and it also has purples. And so I really don't think that I need to hold on to both of them because it's my least used eyeshadow color. It's just neither one of them is getting a lot of use. And then at the times when I do want to throw on some pinks, I have to choose which one to use. And this one is more versatile. So I have decided... <laughs> I have decided to declutter my Mimosa palette. So I'll throw it up on my Mercari and Poshmark apps and maybe somebody else will uh, will get some use out of it because it is a great palette. It's excellent formula. It's really, really good. I just don't need both. I just dragged my fingers across the red shimmer in the palette. Charming. Okay, let's start with this hot pink. I just want to play with the hot pink. I'm going to go in with a medium blending brush. The shadow is called Azalea and I'm going to start this in my outer corner. So now I am nine months pregnant. I am feeling every bit of nine months pregnant. I'm 37 weeks, so I could technically go at any point and it would be all right. I kind of feel like the baby's gonna come around Valentine's Day, like somewhere in the teens of February, even though I'm not really due until the 21st. But I don't know, I just, I have thought from the beginning that the baby was a boy and that the baby would come a little early because my last baby came a full week early. So we'll see, we'll see how that happens and what happens, but I'm excited. I'm a little apprehensive because our last delivery was, was pretty rough. Baby got stuck and it was quite an unpleasant experience overall. Mama. Yes, love. Sorry, I don't know what, what I was just saying. My daughter came down for some help with school. Anyway, I do remember that I was saying that my last delivery was pretty rough. And um, I, I would like to not repeat that. I would like things to go more smoothly this time, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna try to take a video and show you guys my belly so you can see how things are looking, but I am 37 weeks pregnant now and <sighs> pretty ready to have a baby. Can you see that? That is a nine month pregnant belly. There's a baby in here, hopefully in good position. I had a midwife appointment yesterday and Everything looks to be in excellent position for delivery, so could technically be any day. I'm definitely within the safe zone at this point. I'm thinking another week or two. 
With a smaller blending brush, I'm going into the shade Camellia and I'm just hitting the very edge of this. It's not a super light tone, it's actually a little bit more pigmented than I would expect, but it's adding in a different layer of pink. Anyway, being nine months pregnant, I've lost my ankles completely. They're gone. It's just calf straight down to the floor. <laughs> I have pregnancy cankles. <laughs> cankles. I can't hardly get my shoes on. I literally, I legitimately think that I might go to church next week without any shoes because <laughs> I can't get my shoes on. They're tight. They're tight. My fingers are swollen, so I can't get my rings on. It's just, you know, when people talk about all the beautiful points of pregnancy, they, they, they kind of neglect to mention the unpleasant points of pregnancy, the swelling and the, well, every woman knows. I, I mean, I think my, my audience at this point is pretty much all women, many of whom are mothers, <laughs> but I don't need to go into detail. We'll just say that pregnancy isn't always glamorous or comfortable or attractive. It's something. Just because it was looking so pretty, I took the Camellia shade on that same brush and I brought it on most of my lower lash line. And I also took the blending brush that I used for the original Azalea shade. And I carried that towards my crease a bit more, but I did it very lightly, so it's a very light wash of pink. Now I'm gonna take a flat brush and grab the shade Florentina, which is the shimmery gold that has caught my eye. I've sprayed that on my brush and now I'm gonna lay it down starting in the pretty much the center of the lid space. I think I'm gonna keep the inner corner a little bit naked to bring in one more shade there, but I kind of wanted this this to be the focal point of the look where these, this hot pink and the gold, and I mean, I'll figure it out from there. So here's an interesting thing. What, I'm trying to think of what sparked it. Last night I found a YouTuber. Um, I ended up subscribing to her channel and I'm pretty selective about the channels I subscribe to because I don't want my feed to be insane and I don't want to miss my favorite people because they get buried by everybody else. So I keep my channel subscriptions kind of on the smaller side of things, bringing that hot pink a little bit further in so I have a, a diagonal like this. Anyway, I subscribe to her channel. Her name is Jessie Ruiz and she does, you know, makeup and eyeshadow and whatnot. I really liked her personality and her eyeshadow style and the rest of her face makeup was definitely there, but it was much more low key than a lot of other YouTubers that I watch. It was more natural looking, just played down a bit. And I really liked it and how she had a bigger focus on the eyeshadow. She has sort of a mix of neutral and colorful tastes and she does a really lovely job. Her wings are amazing. She does some project panning. The reason it caught my interest was because I've been having a lot of conversations lately about using what you've got and not buying all the new, new, new. I actually filmed a video, which is gonna go live when I'm on maternity leave. And it's all about <sighs> buying stuff that we shouldn't buy simply to get excited, you know, simply to chase that, that serotonin or whatever chemical is released in our brains when we get excited about something. And I made a whole video about it, it's coming later. But anyway, that video was fresh on my mind because I've been doing pre-filming for the baby's arrival. And when I saw this girl, she was clearly into eyeshadow the way that I am. But she also is inter interested in using what she has, and so she does these project pans. Um, hold that thought. Now I'm gonna take, I'll take the same brush and grab the shade Poppy. This is a light pink shimmer, and I'm gonna put it right in the inner corner. It's gonna make this sort of a rose gold effect. Anyway, I'm not a project panner at this point, but I was interested in what she was saying because she had kind of made games around it. And I don't know that she had originated any of these games. They're probably already pretty popular within the project panning community. But one of the games, for example, was working through your, your shadows alphabetically. So choose a shadow that starts with the letter A and make it your goal to hit pan in that shadow. And I think, I think the idea is that they choose like five shadows a month and so they're just working through those particular shadows, hoping to hit pan. And then they make videos later on and they update their, their subscribers to say, hey, this is the progress that I made. And here are some pictures of, you know, I've used this palette or this shadow eight times since our last update. And this is the progress that I've made. Or, hey, I hit pan. Or, hey, I don't think I'm ever going to hit pan. <laughs> Maybe it's a really big pan or something. There are certain rules, like if you find that you just never, ever use that color, you hate the color, you can't seem to incorporate it in your looks, then you can switch it out with something. Or if you've been trying to pan it for a while and you haven't had any success, you can switch it out for something. Things like that. You know, people can customize it to their to their own lives because the goal is to use what we have and not constantly be buying the newest and most exciting thing. 
I mean, we're spending money for these items, right? We should be using them. So this caught my interest. I'm going to take this same color poppy and bring it on the lower lash line um, to just meet the camellia shade that I laid down. This caught my interest because I'm definitely in favor of using what you've got. And I'm in favor of being on a low buy in general. Like, okay, it's fine if there's something that's new and really exciting and you know you're going to love it and you know you're going to use it. Sure. Like, I don't have a problem with spending something now and then for that kind of experience. But just to have something new is a lot more of a dangerous incentive for purchasing. And eyeshadow palettes, for some reason, tend to be kind of an addictive thing for a lot of people, including myself. It's just exciting and fun. Anyway, I was thinking about how I could incorporate that concept, the, the concept of panning my pa my shadows. I'm taking a, a uh, what is this? <laughs> a smudger brush. I'm going to go into the shade Dahlia, which is a deep berry matte, and I'm going to put that in my outer corner on the lower lash line. Um, I was considering, my habit has been to get palettes, use them until I don't use them anymore, and then pass them along. So if my goal is to hit pan in these palettes, they're going to be a lot harder to resell later on. And right now, I'm not really ready to try to hit pan in every single palette I own. I'm just not, I'm not mentally there. But where I am is recognizing that I do have, obviously, a lot of beautiful palettes, and I should be using what I've got. And there are a couple of palettes in my collection that I know I'm not going to be able to resell because they have broken shades. So, for example, the Mint to Be palette from ColourPop and the Child palette from ColourPop, both of those have shades that have broken on me. I think there are two shades in mint which have broken on me. So I thought, well, I could try this whole project panning concept using palettes that I know I won't be able to resell. They're going to be in my collection until I throw them away. I might as well get the most out of them and make a very intentional effort. Not necessarily to hit pan and use up every single shade, but to use what I've got and get the most out of the money that I have already put out for this item. With a much smaller blending brush, I'm grabbing the shimmery white in this palette. It is called White Lotus, and I will spray this. Of course, I'm going to use this as an inner corner highlight. I was thinking that I might try to do like a little mini project pan where I take the palettes in my collection that I know I'm never going to be able to resell or the ones that I am completely confident I'm never, ever going to want to sell, such as the Merry Christmas from Udensai. I think that palette's with me forever. Hitting pan in that is great because I will have gotten the most out of my money. So I might do that. I'm not decided. I'm just thinking about it, sort of toying with the idea. Is this something I'd like to incorporate into my, my lifestyle and my routine? Do I want to limit myself to using specific shades? Again, for resale, it's not ideal. But for something that's going to stay in my collection permanently, it is a great idea because I will be getting the most use out of that item which I have paid for. I would love to know your thoughts below in the comments. Tell me what you think about project panning. Is it a new concept to you? Is it something you do yourself? Is it something that you've heard about but never really looked into? Um, I also, I really liked the idea of panning on themes because it kind of makes it a little bit more fun, a little more unexpected, kind of like playing palette bingo where maybe you've alphabetized all the shadow names in your collection and you randomly pull five or ten of them. Or you do it alphabetically by palette name maybe and you're, you want to, you know, hit pan in three of the, the pans in that palette or something like that. There are also, I've seen people who do project panning based on themes such as, I don't know, a, a popular TV show that's out. They'll choose some colors which make them think of that TV show and those are the colors that they try to hit pan in. And it's just really interesting. There's a whole, this is a whole thing. I mean, this is like me dipping my toes or just peeking through a crack in the door of a huge world of project panners. And believe me, it's a thing. If you're interested, just search on Google. You'll find articles, videos, subreddits, tons of stuff. It's just something that I was glancing at last night and I thought maybe that's something I, I might like to try for palettes in my collection that I know I'm not going to resell. So I don't want to hit pan and then try to sell it on and I'll get, you know, if anything, way less money than the palette is really worth. But for palettes that I know I'm keeping forever, it's a good thing to use up the shadows. I mean, that's the point, right? That's the point. I'm going to go off camera and catch up this eye, finish up the whole look, and I'll be right back to close out this video. Okay, here we go. All is said and done. It's looking very rosy. I feel like I might have done something like this before. I, I don't like to repeat my looks when I'm filming, or in general, actually, but particularly when I'm filming. I think I might have done something like this when I paired the orange sorbet palette with Mimosa. 
I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I think it's pretty and I used a different palette for sure. So anyway, here's the look. I finished it off by doing a winged eyeliner. And then in my waterline, I'm wearing the shade Bay Breeze from ColourPop, which is sort of a peachy cream color. On my lips, I'm wearing two different products. First, I have the So Glassy formula from ColourPop just because my lips were feeling kind of dry. I have used this multiple times now since I bought it and I would not get it again. It's okay. It's just a pretty standard lip gloss sort of formula and it's a little bit stickier than I prefer. I really love their lip oils. I know I say this all the time. I'm actually quite content with chapstick as well, but um, this is just a little bit too sticky. So this is the shade Local in the So Glassy formula, but then on top of that, I use the shade Bit of Honey from NYX Butter Gloss. I like these. They are pigmented, but not so pigmented that they're like lipstick. I have a bunch of those. On my face, I have my blush palette from Tarte and I used a Frosé palette from BH Cosmetics for a highlighter. And and I think I mentioned in a recent video or in a video that's coming up really soon, I've sort of been playing with contouring. So I took a shadow that I've got in one of my eyeshadow palettes and I did a little bit of contouring. I think it didn't really show up in that first video. So I added a bit more and I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm just having fun, just playing around, exploring, experimenting. It's a good time. Anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope you like the look. Remember to let me know down below in the comments what you think about project panning. If you would like to hear more about that, if you would like to see me do it, if you would like progress, like if I decide to do it with some of my palettes that I can't read, sell would you guys be interested in hearing progress and updates on that sort of thing or is that just not at all interesting to you let me know i don't have to include everything on my channel this is just a fun little hobby i enjoy playing with eyeshadow remember to like and subscribe before you leave thank you so much for being with me and i hope to see you again very soon bye